Wait, come back, don't run away. I know, that example with the economics was a little bit abstract, a little bit implicit, you might say, but there are more grounded applications out there. And in fact, here's one that you use on your phone all the time. This is very grounded because it is GPS. You know how GPS works, right? You, you pull out your phone and, and boom, X marks the spot. There you are on your street, in your city, on the planet. And the way that GPS works is through a system of satellites that are continually navigating the globe. The satellites have very, very precise information about their positions, and they are constantly uh, beaming information, data, to your phone. Your phone picks that up, and somehow the satellites are able to tell you exactly where you are. Well, how does that really work? So what it does is it uses timing. It really depends on the time a lot. These um, GPS satellites have very accurate clocks on them. Now, the fact is you need to be in communication with at least four satellites in order to determine your position. How does this work? Okay, the satellites have locations given by X, Y, and Z coordinates. Let's say X, I, Y, I, and Z, I, I going from one to four. Now you, your phone, the receiver, is located at um, an unknown location with coordinates X, Y, and Z. Now each satellite sends out its position and the time at which it is sending it in a, in a ping. Your phone receives that and estimates the time difference, the, the difference in time between when the ping was sent and when it's received. Call that T sub I, I going from one to four. And from that data, it can infer position. How? This is pretty simple. It's really just the Pythagorean theorem. Now, one problem is your uh, phone doesn't have accurate time. It can measure the passage of time accurately, but it doesn't know exactly what time it is right now. There's some unknown bias or drift. We'll call that variable B for bias. Now, use the Pythagorean theorem to write down distance equations. This is given by the, the change in x variable squared plus the change in y coordinate squared plus the change in z coordinate squared equals the, uh, the, the distance. Um, given as a function of the time variables, this is going to be quantity b plus the time difference squared, where b is the bias, all times c squared, where c is the speed of light. That converts the time difference into a physical distance. Okay, so you have one of these quadratic equations for each satellite that you are connected to that is giving you uh, how many equations, how many unknowns? Four equations, four unknowns. That's good news. This is solvable. And your phone solves this system of quadratic equations, or at least approximates a solution to it and approximates really well. I'm not going to get into the details of that. Here's the issue. What's the accuracy? We know how accurate the uh, clocks on the satellites are. How does a, a, a little error, a little inaccuracy there change the accuracy of the physical estimation in the GPS? Okay, so we have this system, four equations, four unknowns, and I'm going to think of this as my, my system F in terms of X variables and T variables, where the X variables are the receiver locations and time bias. The T variables are the um, time differences, T1, T2, T3, T4. Now the implicit function theorem tells you if you're at a solution, how does one variable vary with respect to the other. In this case, what are the derivatives of the x variables with respect to the t variables? Small changes in t correspond to inaccuracies in the satellite atomic clocks. And, and knowing that we have, let's say, nanosecond accuracy in those satellite clocks, 
doing some computations that I'm not going to go through because details, and using the formula from the implicit function theorem implies that your, um, your rate of change, your uncertainty in the x, y, and z coordinates is about 3 meters if you have nanosecond changes in the time differences. That's about how accurate the GPS on my phone is. That's pretty cool, the fact that you can work that out based on the implicit function theorem. There's so much more that you can do with this amazing result. Take some time, think about it. The implicit function theorem is really one of the best, deepest, most useful results on derivatives there is. I know, I know it's complicated, it's abstract, oh, that notation, all these variables. Don't be scared. The implicit function theorem is your friend.